Hey, I'm Aaron, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to start your brand new Twitch channel. We're gonna go really quick, and if you follow along step-by-step, step, you will be done in no time. Here we go. All right, so obviously the first step is to go to twitch.tv in your browser, and then click sign up on the top right. Pick a username. This is going to be your channel name, so it's not just what you log in with, but if you want your channel to be called, you know, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna go best of Japan, and it's gonna tell you if it's available or not. You're gonna need to create a pretty secure password for this, because eventually you're gonna be potentially making income and you want it to be super safe. Enter in your birth date and an email address. Now you will have to now go to that email address and enter verification code to verify your email. Once you've entered that in, it's going to ask you to choose some interests. So just pick a gaming category. It doesn't necessarily have to be the category that you're gonna stream. I'll just pick just chatting and click done. And then you are logged into the site. Click the profile icon at the top right and then click channel. And now you are at your channel and this is the page that people are gonna see when they go to twitch.tv slash and then your username when you first get started. Obviously, there's not a lot on here, but we're gonna take care of that. Click that profile icon again, and go to Creator Dashboard. This is where all of your behind the curtain controls are gonna be on Twitch. So you can click, I'm ready to roll, then go to Stream Manager first. This is your control area where uh, when you are live, you can go in and you can change all kinds of things. You'll click Edit Stream Info, and this is where you can enter in the title of your first show. Uh, my first stream ever, exclam. And then you can enter a go live notification. If you wanted to customize those, you could say, come and join me on my first ever stream. And if somebody had notifications enabled, then that's what they would get on their phone or their device. Or you can just leave it blank and it will send a default notification that just says that you went live. This is where you will enter in your game category and it's important, you have to do this. Twitch will actually get upset with you if you put the wrong game for what you're doing. And you also want the game to be there so that people searching that game can find you. If you don't put anything, then you're not helping yourself get discovered. So let's say that you're just gonna be hanging out and talking about random subjects and you're not even playing a game necessarily, you're just you're just there to talk with whoever comes into the chat about whatever you or they want to talk about. Well, on Twitch, that would be called the just chatting category. Uh, so you would type just chatting and then you would click it. And there you go. Make sure you select the correct language that you're going to be streaming in. Mine is English and then I'll click done. So now that bit is set up. Now come over to the nav on the left hand side and click preferences and then channel. This first spot here is where you're going to get your stream key that you actually put in your streaming software so that the software knows where the stream needs to end up. And you can just click copy and then that's copied to your clipboard and you can take it over to your broadcasting software and paste that where it asks for your stream key. For example, if you were using OBS Studio to stream, you could click settings and then stream, change the service to Twitch and then click use stream key and then you can paste your stream key in there. You could also click connect account, which will then ask you to authorize Twitch to connect directly to OBS Studio. And then you would authorize Twitch after you log in to connect directly to your OBS Studio. In fact, I have a video uh, on exactly what kinds of additional features you get if you do connect directly with OBS Studio. I'll put the link in the description below. The store past broadcast toggle is where you tell Twitch that you want your broadcast to be saved to your channel in the videos section once you go offline. By default, it's turned off. And I recommend for your growth as a streamer that you have it turned on so that people can watch your stream when you're not live. If they see a link to your channel somewhere and you're offline, well, they wanna see what your content is gonna be like when you are live. So. This way they can go to the video section and they can watch a past broadcast to decide if they wanna follow you or not. You should turn on mature content if you plan on cursing or showing anything that a kid shouldn't see. Under latency mode, you have two options. Low latency, which is great if you want to have very quick interactions with your chat. But if your hardware is not super, super good, you're on a laptop or you're on an old computer, 
or your upload speed is not that high, then you probably want to change it to normal latency. It'll increase the distance between something that you ask the chat for and then you seeing their responses. Basically, there's a, a slightly longer delay, but it may not matter depending on what you're doing. And I think in most cases, it really doesn't matter. In my opinion, normal latency is good for 90% of first time streamers. If you scroll down, this is where you can add a profile picture for your icon, put a photo of yourself or your logo or anything like that. This is also where you can upload a custom image for the profile banner. And in the bio, you can put a little bit of information about who you are. Now, if you scroll down a little bit to video player banner, this is where you would upload an image uh, that you want to be shown when you are offline. You can add links to your social media accounts here under social links. Next, you can click moderation under the preferences. And this is where you would basically tell Twitch how much it should moderate your chat for you uh, based on certain keywords or chat behaviors that you may find undesirable. And you can even type out some custom rules that you want new viewers to read through before they can type in your chat. Now, if you wanna go back to your channel, just click your icon at the top right and click channel. And that way you can see what new viewers will see when they come to your uh, URL. If you click about, then you will be brought to the bio that can be seen underneath the video player, which shows up when you are live. And underneath that is an area where you can add panels. So you click this little toggle that says edit panels, and then you can add all kinds of extensions. And if you wanna see what extensions are available, you can click view all extensions. Or you can also hover over a panel with a plus, click that. And then you have uh, options of telling an extension where you want it to go, or you can just click add a text or image panel, and then you can title your panel. You can add an image by clicking the add image button. You can add a URL that you want the image to link to when someone clicks it, and a description. And then when you're done editing those panels, you can just toggle this back off by clicking the toggle. If you wanna see what your chat room looks like when you're offline, you can just click chat and then it changes the configuration to a video player with the chat room on the side. And then you can scroll down to sort of see what viewers would see when you are live in your sort of panels area. There you have it. That was it. I told you it'd be fast. You have a Twitch account now and you are ready to start streaming to it. If you want more help, I've got more videos. I'll put them up here. If you've got questions, leave them in the comment section. Consider subscribing because I've got all kinds of videos coming out all the time. Thanks for watching and have a great time on Twitch.